Today, we're making Pottery Barn Bunny Dupes. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. We're going to start off by doing this Peter Rabbit stoneware picture. You can see their price was $49.50. I'm going to show you how to make this on a much smaller budget. So we're going to take some tissue paper and I'm going to tape this over a piece of cardstock. I'm just going to use my tape, go around the edges of each side of this paper and just secure it down. What we're going to do is use our inkjet printer to print out a color photo of Peter Rabbit that I found and I will link that for you. So I have a nice straight edge and that's the end I want to go into the printer. Look at this beautiful picture. Love it. Again, the links are going to be below for you and you can check that out on my Pinterest. I have lots of freebies over there. All right, and this is a thrifted picture that I got. Can you believe that? There's not even a chip out of it. It's in perfect condition. But I'm going to wipe it off and get all of my little oils off my from my hands and from the thrift store and wherever else, get that all off. You can wash with soap and water if you want to and you just let it dry really well and then you can use it. I'm gonna take this little mini cutting board. I had already measured this against the picture so I know what size I'm going to need. And I'm just gonna go ahead and trim it down. You want to use a pencil on the tissue paper, not a pen that might bleed. You don't wanna make a mess. So go ahead and cut to the inside of the line. And originally I thought that I would leave this oval or egg shape on the picture, but you'll see I change it up just a little bit in a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and save some of the other graphics from this picture. I'm gonna cut out the shovel with the bird and then there are some cabbages or lettuce, whatever type of greens that are on there that I wanted to cut out of the garden and use those as well. Because really, we call them dupes, but for me, this is more like an inspiration. Pottery Barn was an inspiration, but you get the same type of a look. So this is where I decide, mm, maybe I wanna cut this down a little bit. In the end, it didn't really matter, but you'll see. So just watch how I do it and then decide which way you would prefer to do it. Cutting it all out, little messy, fussy cutting in the beginning or just wait to the end. And I know that I want it to fit on this part of the picture, I'm gonna add my Mod Podge and I'm just using some glossy Mod, Pod, Mod Podge because this picture is glossy. I'm gonna put this down and then lay my tissue down. You wanna be careful because tissue is fragile. Where it is lifting away, I'm just gonna cut little slits and then tuck it and overlap it. If it's wrinkled, it doesn't really matter. It's not as noticeable because this isn't a thick paper. This is just a tissue paper and it's gonna lay down nice and smooth. And what I'm doing now is just smoothing it out with my fingers to make sure that I don't tear it. And I do have some glue on my fingers. You can see there to the left, I have some glue on my fingers. That way I don't have dry fingers on that wet paper and tear it. Then I decide, how about adding some of these pieces of greens up here on the top of the picture to just kind of extend the color and the picture on the top because they're in our inspiration piece, they do have little bits and pieces throughout, so I thought maybe that would be good on our picture. So I'll show you how to do it, and if you choose not to use it, if you know you don't wanna use the smaller pieces, you certainly do not have to do that. But if you want to, this is how you do it. So I'm just looking at where I wanna put it, because once you put it down, you can't lift it up. You can't lift it, it will tear. So there was a little bit already on there, I'm just putting it down and then I'm gonna use my little soft flat brush and my fingers to place it down. I'm gonna do the same thing, just here and there where I think I wanna put those pieces. Then I'm gonna take some Mod Podge, go over the top with this. Uh, again, this is a soft brush because a stiff brush would tear the tissue. You don't wanna do that. Now I'm gonna continue around and just put that wherever I wanna put it. But I like it like that. I think it looks nice. And then I'm going to turn this picture around and since it's still slightly wet from the Mod Podge, I'm going to prop it up on this wreath and then I'm going to go ahead and put my the little shovel piece with the little bird on the back. 
all right so now because I don't like the rough edges around there it's just I don't like it I don't think it blends in well I just don't like it I'm gonna take a stiff brush after this is all dry and I'm gonna take some white paint and I'm gonna stipple it all around the edges so that I can create somewhat of a egg or oval shape it's gonna make it blend more into the picture and it just gives it a better look in my opinion but you you can do this whichever way you like it and you could certainly without stippling go around it with a, a brush and just make a you know a stiffer more rigid or exact line if you wanted to but I want mine to be stippled and dreamy and watercolor and cottagey and I think that I do achieve that in the end and you can just let me know what you think about it you see how that blends it out I love it I'll be using this method again of course because I really like it and then once I start adding this down and putting it around I thought you know what this picture would be really pretty if the entire thing was stippled so I went ahead and took that same white paint I think that is wicker white that I'm using and I'm gonna just take that all the way around to the outside and then continue around the entire picture I do this also around the little greens that I have on the top kind of go around the edges of those and that helps blend that out because it is darker that's a, like a richer color than what it looks like on my piece in the middle so I'm just going to continue all the way around now if you don't have a stippling brush and a lot of people don't they don't have these brushes um, you can most definitely use a sponge and I have a little piece cut over there and I'll show you how to do that in just a moment but you're just gonna pounce it up and down I'm not dragging it at all I'm just pouncing up and down and it leaves like bristle prints and it's a really pretty texture With a sponge you want to be sure that you tear that so you don't have any hard lines on it and then just start pouncing that all over and it it does really well it does give it the same type of a look and so here's a close-up so you can see what that looks like and then um, you just continue around that print that's on the back go around there so now you have two options you can use a brush or you can use a sponge I wouldn't recommend a makeup sponge I like these sponges and I did get mine from Dollar Tree it was a bath sponge so now we're gonna go on to the Essex Bunny 2950 to 3950 can you believe that all right, I'm going to start off with some Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte Slate Gray Paint. And I'm going to take my little ceramic bunnies. I have a little tea light ceramic bunny and then a larger one. And I'm going to take them outside and spray paint them. They don't have to be perfect. You can see I pointed out some little spots that were still white. And then once it is definitely good and dry, you don't want any tackiness left, you can go on to the next step. I'm going to take some of this paint. It's a dark gray. And I'm going to mix it with some baking soda. I don't have exact measurements for you here. You're just going to play around until you get to the right consistency. So I have probably a little over a tablespoon of the baking soda in the cap there. And then I've added some of the gray paint. And it's about a tablespoon of paint probably. I'm going to mix that in. I'm just using a little stick here that I use on my paints and my things like that just to mix it up and then you can see the texture of that okay it's kind of like a cake icing you want it to be thick because you want it to have little bumps and grooves and nicks in here for what I'm doing I want this to have a cement look is it exactly like the Essex bunnies from Pottery Barn no it is not exactly like that but it is an option if you like a concrete look and I think it gives you the same feel in the end but you can let me know when you see the end results so I am just kind of dragging and going up and down and back and forth um, I don't want to have an exact pattern on here I want to go in all different directions get in the cracks around the tail the grooves um, the feet the ears the eyes the mouth under the neck and once you get all that down you can just sit it down and then work on the part above it see I had a little fingerprint I had to get that all cleaned out you can get these little bunnies at Target dollar spot you could probably get something like this the Dollar Tree maybe I don't know I haven't I haven't seen them but maybe 
I've had mine for years. They've been white in my Easter collection for so long. Then we're going to take the larger one. And this one actually, to me, turned out better because it is it was originally more textured. You can see the little lines and dips um, kind of gives it like a texture to the fur. So it, it works really well with this one. I'm just going to continue on just like I did with the smaller one and go all around them. And then when they're dry, this is what they look like. And you really want to make sure they're dry. I let mine dry overnight. They will dry to the touch sooner than that, though. I'm going to take two short little, um, I call them stippling brushes, but they're stencil brushes. I'm going to take some white chalk paint and just go around the where the grooves would be. Okay, now, this was my first time doing this. So give me some grace here because I really, uh, I talked to myself and I was thinking, oh my goodness, what have you done? This is not going to be, th this is going to be a disaster. But as I keep going along, I kind of got a feel for it. And you'll see that as it progresses through here. So in the beginning, when you start doing this and if it looks terrible, do not give up on yourself. It is just paint and we can fix it, right? We can fix it. So I put this in fast motion so you could see here the progression without having to watch every single step and get bored with me. So just hang in there, hang in there. Okay, so this is what it looks like at first. And then I decide, okay, we're gonna go in and we're gonna add some more. By the time I got done with the little bunny, I had much more confidence in myself to move on to the larger bunny. And this one I was much happier with. Again, it goes in in steps and it takes some time to accomplish the look that you like with this technique. But I promise you, if you hang in there, it's going to get better. See, right now my bunny does not look so wonderful, right? It really doesn't look that great. But I'm going to keep going and I'm going to layer it on just a little bit at a time. I think that's the key to this technique. Don't go too heavy handed because you see the difference when I use a lighter approach on this side. Isn't that better? I think that looks so much better and it really does give it a concrete look to me you know to me it does and maybe if you wanted to go with a lighter gray underneath you could you know you could mix that in and get a little bit of a lighter look but i like this be sure that you get around the eyes around the ears the feet the toes the mouth around the neck and y'all don't be so concerned about where your bunnies come from you can get them anywhere. So here we go with the finished one. And I decided to go just a little bit heavier on this little one. Gotta accent his little nose a little bit better. I look like I'm punching him in the nose. But it makes a difference. Look at his little cute nose. And then a dry brush on top of that. And so I went a little heavier handed on the small one. And then not so much so on the large one. Now we're going to do a stone Easter Bunny, 69 to $207. Uh-uh. Nope. Let me show you how I did it. I'm going to add some chalk paint here, and I think this was my plaster chalk paint and some baking soda. This time I kind of got the texture right the first time. And then I'm going to show you how it looks. I'm just using a little spatula to show you. It looks a little bit like a lighter, easier cake batter or like frosting. Same situation here. It's going to be super thick. It starts to dry pretty quick. Um, if you have a, a problem maybe with your texture, this paint texture sticking on to that ceramic, please seal it first. Use some type of a sealer. Get you some Mod Podge, something like that, and it'll help it stick better. With this terracotta bunny, it stuck perfectly. It was, this, this, I should have done this years ago. I should have tried this, but you know, a lot of times in life, we let fear keep us away from doing things and we have doubt and that carries over into our crafting. You know, we're not, not always adventurous in everything we do, but it's okay to try it. You know, it's paint. You can always start over. And if you get something from the thrift store, this little bunny came from the thrift store. You know, it, I mean, how much money are you really wasting if you try it? You're still saving so much money compared to what you would if you went to Pottery Barn and got it. I'm not paying 
27 or $207 for anything in my house, I promise. Not unless it's a big piece of furniture. Okay, so after it is dried, and again, it dried overnight as well, I'm gonna take this sponge and tear it until there are no fine edges on it. I want it to be just kind of a loose look. I'm adding some of my antiquing wax down into a little bit of water, and then I'm gonna use this sponge to start applying it. I'm gonna just pounce this up and down, and I wanna get all over Bunny. Again, you probably wanna seal your products first, you know, your projects first, before you put it down because if you are a little heavy handed and this is a this is water that you're putting on here now water and chalk paint it's not water resistant it can crack I had a little bit of a problem on the smaller bunny but I fixed it um, but yeah I suggest that you go ahead and put a layer of Mod Podge on it or spray sealer or something like that so that it has some grip to hold on to all right so I put this in fast motion. You can see the progression. You can see that he's starting to look like he's aged. And I love that. He's looking like he's been sitting outside for a while. Yes, Mr. Bunny, bring it. I love it. I think it's cute. So after it is dried completely, then you can lightly go back over like on the ears, on the feet, on the tail, any areas that they have, you know, a little more detail, go ahead and put it there. That's how it would age anyway. You know, pollen falls on it, dust falls on it, and this is how it would be. Make him nice and cute, both of them. Get it as aged as you want it to look, and then be sure you put it someplace and let it dry completely. I didn't seal my bunnies at all. And I love the way they look. They're so cute. Love them. See, I've been able to give them some new life instead of donating them. Yes. I love that age look. So here are our bunnies now in the end. These are our inspired dupes. You can see how aged they look. And I think these look like stone. And I think that the gray bunnies do look like concrete. And what do you think about that picture? I believe in you and I believe that you can do these projects. I would love to have you as a member of my family, so subscribe if you enjoy these videos. Give me a thumbs up if you like them, and I'll see you again real soon. Bye.